Hello and Hello. welcome. Oh, oh you you're into. You, you, yeah. Well, this is embarrassing. Let's just continue. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Universal Studios Great Britain Updates Radio. That is a hell of a mouthful. Otherwise known as USGBU Radio. Doesn't really work. USGB does it? Updates Radio. I'm going to clip that, that free. and I'm going to use it. Free. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. So that voice that you can hear is my co-host rich say hello rich hello rich <laughs> that is a joke that i've never heard before well done try my well best done. Just try my best and i am mike and we are here to talk all about universal studios great britain and the hope and dreams that it will come to fruition in sleepy little kempston hardwick in rural bedfordshire I'm very excited, Rich. I don't know about you. Well, this is literally your dream. This is... It, it could be any company doing anything, anywhere. It is the right place, the right time, and the right project. It is just... They might as well just call this Universal Mike, because it's made for you. I'm more than happy if they want to change that. You know, nothing is in stone just yet. So when they do that announcement, call it that, and I will spend all my money there. Yeah. Also, nice Twitter handle follow you as well, and Universal Mike. Yeah, why not? I'm here get, for get, it. get straight on that. Uh, that's that's copyright penned in, by the way. Universal Mike. You just make sure you get that get on that before this goes out. Then, because yeah, I will that. do it immediately after we finish recording this podcast. Excellent. Although, actually, Excellent. I'm probably going to forget, so someone's going to have it. And th- you know what? They're welcome to it because there is only one original Universal Mike, and he is sitting in this chair right now. I love your confidence. That's what always drew me to you, Mike. That's what always drew me to you, your confidence. I I appreciate it. Thank you. So, obviously, the park is going to be called Universal Studios Great Britain. Mm. And it is in England. There's no skirting around that. The land that Universal owns is in England. So, as a Welshman, how do you feel about, uh, you know, being brought into this Universal bubble? Well, more than fine. I mean... It's not like this kind of project was going to happen in Wales. I mean, we've already got one of the worst theme parks in the UK in Oakwood Park that we can go to. Plus, as an infrastructure wise, we've got one motorway, which is South Wales, M4 corridor. There's nowhere they're going to put it unless when the steelworks in Port Talbot closes, they decide, you know what, let's just build a big old theme park there, but that's all toxic. So there's nowhere they could build it in Wales. So the fact that they're building it anywhere, I'll take that for a victory. Well, interestingly, um, the the land that they are potentially going to build the park on is an ex-brickwork, so it wouldn't be too dissimilar if they were to build it there in Port Talbot, but, but alas, they have chosen, they have yeah. bought the land in Kempston Hardwick, in sleepy old Kempston Hardwick, just off the A421, not too far from the M1 as well. So good travel links to it, which mm. is better than for Port Talbot, which is, is it the M4? Is right yeah, on? we're on the M4 corridor and we've got the, uh, the one train line. I mean, it's not electrified. We're not part of HS2 or nothing. Can't have, you know, can't have nice things. But uh, yeah, I mean, it makes complete sense to me. So you are a tourist. You've travelled from somewhere around the world. You're in London and you decide you want to go to Universal Studios Great Britain. How are you getting there? You, what station are you going to? How long is it taking? If you decide to rent a car, how long is it taking that way? And how are you getting there? You, you are actually spoilt for choice, especially if you want to go by train. So you could either get the line from Euston uh, and then get to Bletchley and then change onto the Marston Vale line and go from Bletchley to what would now be Kempston Hardwick, although there are rumours that they're going to merge the Kempston Hardwick and Stuart B stations into one station, which looks to be on the land that Universal owns. So that would be interesting. They could make their own station from scratch and that journey would probably take around about an hour including the transfers and things like that or you could get a train from uh, I think it's King's Cross um, and up that line there to Bedford and then uh, there are rumours that a small village called Wixom's will be getting a new uh, station which is only well it's less than a mile from Universal no changing at that one uh, and that one would probably be about 40 minutes or so. So 
two options for you there. You've obviously got the M1, which if you went by car, you'd probably get to the resort from London in about 50 minutes, maybe mm -hmm. an hour on a not so great day. So there's there's a lot of options. You're, you're not going to struggle to get to this park. And considering Luton as well, it's about 40 minutes away. It it's, yeah, it opens up a lot of options, especially for international travellers as well. I was going to say, so for an international traveller in London, it's a it's a possible day trip or an easy day trip. Get up early, 40 minutes on the train, stay till the end of the day, and you're back for the evening as well. Then it's not a an all day thing, or you're not uh, straight away having to go into an overnight stay if you if you didn't want to. It would be similar, I guess, in comparison to us going over to France for a day trip to Disneyland. It it's doable. You'd be tired, but it's doable. It would be a long day. Man of my age, I'm always tired, so that's no problem. That's fine. Universal are obviously confident in the land. They've spent $270 million. And yes, they are, at the moment, underway with their feasibility studies. But you would expect they're not just going to find this pocket of land and go, let's take a punt on that. Let's just buy it, and mm. then we'll worry about it later. So they've... Undoubtedly, they're going to have done some sort of pre-feasibility study. So they're not going to drop nearly 300 million on a let's suck it and see. They, they're going yeah. to be pretty confident that this is going to go ahead. I mean, 270 million, that's like six pins from Disney. That's that's <laughs> a big chunk of change. And yeah, for they context... They are top quality pins. They are Rich top quality a, yeah, pins. Rich is a pin man. Only a Disney and Universal pin man, though. Like If I started talking about Merlin pins right now you would you would flip a, a table wouldn't you i wouldn't even flip a table because it's not even worth my effort because you know it, they're not they're joking pins aren't they you know it's disney pins disney <sighs> pins are the great pins universal pin i like a universal pin as well i'll get maybe one or two while i'm there but if i'm going to another theme park if i went to thought park i'm not like let's get a look at them pins i'm like no. The only other place I would get a pin would be the Olympics. So three places, one of which is a sporting event. Yeah, but that's exactly where pin collecting started from, was the Olympics. So you'd be going back to the spiritual home of it. Right. Okay. I, I, will, I will allow it then. I will allow there it. Yeah. So one of the uh, points that Alicia Stella raised when she broke this news way back in December was that it's looking like Universal aren't going to use any uh, rides from Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and presumably none from Epic Universe as well. Uh, but didn't say anything about not reusing themes. Mm -hmm. So what kind, of, uh, what kind of themes would you like to see at Universal Great Britain? Oh, what the, oh, I mean, if we're, if we're taking st straight from Orlando, I mean, You'd think they'd have to do Harry Potter, some sort of Harry Potter or Potterverse, whether it be Fantastic Beasts. The the issue there then is that cross pollination between that and the Warner Brothers Studio tour. Yeah, that's only there's a, forty-five minutes away. Yeah, it's a com conflict of interest because if you've got those um, international tourists who are in. London for a week and they're only going to go out of London for a day they're only going to choose one and then it's like okay do you go for the man built well man built as if it's natural um, the, the theme park version of the movie or do you go for the actual set of the movie now as someone who's been to Diagon Alley on both the studio tour and in Orlando my question to you, Mike, and I'll give my answer after you. Which is better as an experience to go to? Oh, I mean, it it has to be at Universal Studios for me. Like, I agree. They, uh, they complement each other. One is effectively a museum and one is mm. a theme park attraction. So you can maybe spend a couple of minutes at the one in the studio tour taking, oh, I recognise that from the movie, that's cool, but... <laughs> You're not going to spend hours in Diagon Alley within that studio tour, whereas you might at Universal Studios 
in the park, in Diagon Alley in the parks. And yeah, it's, I, I feel like they can coexist. Like if they were to put in Universal, in, in uh, Harry Potter in Universal Studios, they, they, they can become one. They can complement each other. You could get people going to both and not detracting from each experience. I, I think the only reason it wouldn't necessarily happen is if, if Warner Brothers hates money, basically. Like, there's a lot of money to be made from merchandise. Yeah, definitely. And Butterbeer. Yeah, exactly. Like, it would be worth it from Butterbeer alone. The only... I think they they offer two, don't they, in the studio tour. They do the regular Butterbeer and the ice cream. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of just the original Butterbeer. The Butterbeer no, ice cream is nice. Yeah. Um, first time I had frozen butter beer, I was like, well, this is the future. And then I tried hot butter beer, and I was mm-hmm. like, the future is now. Get this cold stuff out of there. It's all about the hot butter beer. That's where it's at. So, but Then they took it too far, and they did potted cream. It's like just a pot of cream and a spoon, and I'm supposed to eat it. Like a monster. I mean, as, as Brits that we are, you know, we like a cream tea, but the idea of just, you know, going to town on just a pot of cream, uh, of clotted cream, if you will, then, I mean, does it sound mm-hmm. brilliant? Yes. Have we done it in our darkest days when we're alone and, no, and the curtains are closed? Almost certainly. Would we do it at a theme park with people looking? I don't know. I would. I would. Yeah. And they have also recently just uh, announced, like, a toffee or a caramel so not had that. I think it was literally this week that they announced that. So it's something for the future. It's one of the very few butter beer things that doesn't exist, but it now exists. They'd have to go fudge if they were over here. Fudge would be the obvious one. Right? There is fudge. There is fudge. Oh, there's already fudge. Oh, there is already. F- yeah. So uh, what are we doing? There's literally nothing else. Pizza? I don't know. No. Licorice? I don't know. What's what's? Um, I don't know. <laughs> We're going down a rabbit hole here. Huh? Yeah, a we are. Beer going... rabbit hole. Uh, it is. It's a delicious rabbit hole of that. I'd like to eat that rabbit hole. Well, moving on from that, because that could be interpreted in several different ways. Um, we we can touch on this subject again because some of the uh, the viewer questions or, or comments touch on this again a little later. But how do you feel right now, knowing that they only talked about this as a possibility for the first time in December? How do you feel about the possibility of this opening by 2030? Confident, or is that a little bit adventurous and asking a little bit too much of the planning process and the construction process in the UK? With it being universal, I'm more confident with it. If it was Disney, no way. I mean, Mm -hmm. have you seen Epcot recently? Um, I mean, they're saying now that they finally got a date where Communicore is going to open back up and pretty much it's just a paint job of what they were going to knock down and then they realised, oh, we can't knock this down because then we're going to have to build something else. So they just kept it behind boards and where's my Mary Poppins ride? Where's all that stuff we were going to have? Where's the viewing thing? So if it was Disney, no way. But Universal, I mean, they are going for a really aggressive stance at the moment then because they're going Las Vegas. They've got this uh, local park. Is it in Texas as well then? Yeah, Universal Kids, is it? Yeah, that's Kids Park. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, I, was gonna, I thought it was Universal Kids with a Z. Like, that would be... I could. I don't know why I felt like I could almost see that sign in my if head If it opened in 1999, it would be called that. It yeah. would definitely be, yeah. And it would have Cat Dog there and things like that. But, uh, oh, no. Dog. I mean, compared to other projects that have been rumoured, this one actually feels real. I mean, Mike, you're in a better position than me Compared to some of the things that have been talked about before, the London mm-hmm. Resort, um, yeah. Paramount, everything like that. I mean, take us through some of the ones that, that that have been suggested and the difference between them and what we're seeing right now. Well, to, to use the London Resort as the perfect example, it was basically Walt Disney and his dream, but without any of the finance or IP or backing or knowledge behind him. It was just one guy who thought... I'm going to make a theme park. And he somehow convinced Paramount to get on board. Didn't even own an acre of land down there in Kent. 
Um, and yeah, the rest, as they say, is history. Ongoing painful history, because I think it was 2012 they originally announced that, so 12 years ago as we're recording this. And uh, yeah, it's seen delay after delay after lawsuit after delay after tears after delay. And now that Universal Studios has thrown its hat in the ring, um, I think it's basically, it's not even the final nail in the coffin for the London Resort. Like there wasn't even a coffin to, to hammer anything into, to be honest. I find it weird that there would be a, a national news story in one of the papers probably at what, every six, nine months of saying, it's gonna be the Disney of the UK. It's yeah. like Disneyland UK, it's gonna be this. With this project, I feel like there hasn't been that, like there's been a lot of local stuff that you've been keeping up to date with um, and lots of moving and shaking there. But I don't feel like they're going for this big power play because they, they don't need to. It's like, do you know what? We're confident. We know when we want to make this a big deal. We know when we want to have our big coming out party and we mm -hmm. know when we want to have our big launch event and we're going to do it right. We're not going to just keep going, hey, here's a bit of concept art. This would be something, right? Hey, come on. Yeah, that and the, the London Resort, they'd love to dangle that carrot. Whereas... Mm. Universal has a big old bag of carrots and they know yeah. the right time to just throw them in our faces. And that time will probably... They, they need to make sure that they're 100% confident with it. They will then... They've been meeting with local councillors and the mayor every month. Um, they've been good at sort of being transparent with locals. They created that mini site, which uh, has the letter on it that sort of puts all their cards on the table, says, this is what we want to do. We don't know quite how and when yet, but we know where we want to do it. And so it feels like they're doing everything right. They are going to have a few battles once they officially come out and announce it. I can't imagine to the degree of people chaining themselves to lampposts. I mean, Kempson Hardwick is basically a street with 10 houses, a couple of businesses on there. Um, and rumours, as far as those go, is everyone's, there's been a lot of NDA signed around there, but allegedly people have uh, sold up to Universal. I heard someone say that businesses who have sold up already have to be out in April, which seems quite quick. So this I'm going to take that April, one. April this yeah. year. Yeah, that seems too quick. So unless this has been a deal that's been in play since, you know, last summer, I can't imagine that's the case. But come April, I will venture through Kempston Hard Hardwick again and see if there are any removal vans being loaded up with stuff from businesses there. But uh, yeah, that, that one just seems a little too optimistic at the moment. But we will see what happens over the next... A uh, few months, but I can't imagine we're going to hear anything from Universal themselves until mm -hmm. maybe October, November this year. It's going to be related news. Like I, I know that you uh, mentioned uh, to me before we started recording, and then that uh, the government had passed funding to improve the train lines around the area. Because you meant, oh, you mentioned about the. Uh, the amalgamation of the two stations, wasn't it? Yeah, so that that was going to be... That's almost like a little indirect, okay, something's going on yeah. here. They're, this is actual backing. Yeah, so there's been plans to improve the Marston Vale line, which is the, the line that runs directly through the site. That's where the Kempston Hardwick station is. That's currently sat in the middle of the two parcels of land. Uh, so that, that's been earmarked for a long time. There's plans to improve that whole line between Bletchley and Bedford. Because uh, currently, I think it's one train an hour or something like, like that, or four trains a day runs along that line, which is not anywhere near enough to ferry people to and from a theme park, at, at least not a theme park on universal scale. Um, but that was always the plan to go ahead. But recently, as a couple of weeks ago, uh, the government has actually said that they're going to bring those plans forward. Um, so it's expected that that will start at some point over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, which means, it, you know, if the good old government construction teams pull their finger out, it might be in a position 
to to stop you know taking people to the gates of Universal Studios Great Britain so clearly the government are gonna be uh, keen to back this this is gonna bring in so many jobs not just from a uh, construction point of view which is rumored to have 30,000 people building this thing so like you mentioned earlier Disney are not going to put that sort of manpower behind a building project. I mean, I think that Tiana Tiana's Bioadventure re-theme has got like two guys working on it and one of yeah. them's part-time, something like that. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, this is not Disney that we're talking about here. This is the same company who have thrown Epic Universe up from basically a bog to almost a functional theme park in the space of maybe was it three years because covid delayed Mm. a lot of stuff so they are throwing that thing up so we can only assume that they would do the same thing over here so yeah they uh the fact that the government putting their money where their mouth is seemingly because they know that if they don't do that universal are gonna be like we can't work with these guys yeah and that's not gonna do any good for anyone because imagine the amount of tax that Universal are going to pay on merchandise and staff earnings and just all mm. of that stuff that we don't understand as mere mortals. So there's a lot of money to be made by the government and Universal and the government are not going to want to miss out on that slice of pie. Do you know you mentioned there about um, Epic Universe being thrown up and I mentioned earlier about the the Las Vegas experience that they're doing uh, with is a permanent Halloween Horror Nights. Yes, yeah, that's right. And, and rumoured and to the, have one of those in London as well. This is what... I, really? I hadn't heard that one. Okay, well, what is it about Universal then the last, what, five, six years where they... Well, probably even less than that, where they've just decided we're going rapid, aggressive expansions. Like, what... what, what switched with them do you think to to make them just decide this is the way to go i would say the turning point was when hogsmeade opened in orlando like Mm -hmm. for a long time universal were kind of they were doing their thing they were doing well uh, but they weren't doing as well as certainly not as they are now or, or, or as disney at the time and potter has just made them so much money and brought so many people in through those gates that's why was it a couple of years, four, four years later, something like that? That's when Diagon Alley opened. Mm. We're also now getting a whole new land um, in the Wizarding World, in Epic Universe. I mean, I think setting it in Fantastic Beasts Wizarding Paris is probably not a good idea. And I think mm. had they had the opportunity to do that again, they would probably not have done that. They would have probably put the Ministry ride in... Um, Universal Studios and then done something different for Epic Universe, mm. I don't know but uh, I've completely forgotten where, what your original question was at that, I was going on some sort of Harry Just Potter what tangent brought, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Universal's rapid expansion yes um, money, lots of money <laughs> they enjoy money, they want more money um, yeah. so they, they obviously, um, is it 2022 they opened the Beijing Park They've got the one in Osaka. They've got Singapore. They are making a lot of money. They just don't have anywhere that's permanently making the money in Europe. And mm. there are rumours that they will get some sort of interest back in uh, Port of Ventura in Spain. Mm. Uh, but that is more of a traditional theme park in that it's light theming on a lot of the rides. Um, big roller coasters, big thrill coasters, which granted Universal has some, but we're talking big monsters, 250 foot plus monsters. And I don't know if Universal's MO necessarily aligns with that in the same way that a big fresh plot of land here in the UK would do for them. Um, And yeah, the fact that we might potentially get a permanent... Halloween Horror Nights attraction somewhere in London as well, which could then double up as like a preview centre for them. Mm. Um, I think that would do very well. Play- attractions like the London Dungeons and the London Bridge Experience, things like that, they do really well. They're always at capacity. So you could imagine a permanent scare attraction doing really well in London and giving Universal more of that juicy money. Do you think, would you enjoy um, or would you visit a permanent horror attraction if there was one in London? I mean, I think I'd give it a go once. I mean, more so. Yeah, I. 
I don't know whether it's almost made for me. It's made for the city break tourist uh, yeah. kind of uh, kind of crowd in the same way. Like, do you know, with a lot of um, cities at the moment, you'll get these um, kind of like sensory immersive um, kind of experiences where you go to a room and it's just filled with. Um, I was just going to say ball pit, but like a ball stuff. pit yeah. and projections. Really Insta-friendly. Now, there's nothing yeah. that is indicative to the city or the culture, but they're all very popular and they have people coming in then because it's just something that families know they can do. And it's almost like the McDonald's thing. It's you know what you're getting wherever you go then. You've got that brand thing of it doesn't matter where I am. If I see that brand in there, I know that I'm going to get the same thing that I would back at home or anything like that so yeah i mean i definitely i definitely visit it i mean i'm not a big scare guy you know but i def i think i'd have to give it a go plus i imagine you'd be there straight away and you'd be you'd want someone to talk at about it not talk to <laughs> and talk with you talk will at. listen to me yes because my opinion is correct yeah no strangely enough rich i'm actually on the same ship as you that's not a saying but it is now i suppose um in that i'm not a massive horror attraction guy um i i like horror films but when they're running at me i'm not yeah i'm not particularly hot on that i mean when the if and when universal studios opens i'm sure i'll go to halloween horror nights and love it i've never been to it in orlando mm. um i might do it Next year, I'm not sure. We will see once Epic Universe opens and, and when yeah. we end up going out for that. Um, but I think you're right as well in that if they did open a horror attraction in London, it's not going to be the sort of place that sells or even offers annual passes. That That's not... It's not mm. going to get people going every day, every week, even every month. It's going to be a, yeah. a one and done kind of thing unless they keep bringing in new mazes or something like every year it's it's just there's only so many times you can be jump scared it's like oh i remember yeah. this last time there was someone around the corner oh here he is again hello malcolm yeah so yeah it's 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 something i will do and i'll go to and i'm sure i would enjoy it but be very scared um mm -hmm. but yeah not something that i'm gonna want to go to particularly often have they said where that could be in london they haven't, and I've been trying to rack my brains over Didn't where it would be because it's going to Shrek gonna... experience. That I... is still there. That that's is still, still there. there. Wow. Yeah, and that's owned by Merlin. Um, oh, there it's is a Merlin one. one. Oh, right. Yeah, th there is one obvious place that I would expect to see it um, because it needs to be central. It needs to get that passing foot traffic to drive people in because I don't know if people necessarily would would travel to it. Um, and I, I would imagine um, you've probably heard of it. The uh, Trocadero, which is in, is it Piccadilly Circus? Yeah. It seems it to be the to right have, size for it. It used to have Sega World in it. It did, yeah. Oh. So it had, it's already been that, and I think it's basically a bunch of like independent stores at the minute, and yeah, I don't think a, they're using a lot of the space. I think that it could probably use a, a lick of paint and a little bit of uh, new motivation from it. Yeah, and Universal are going to have the budget to turn that from glorified mall to mm. spooky town so we'll see what happens there we will yeah. see i i'm not gonna like not seen anything about any permits we we had something it was a trademark for horror nights but does that relate to the new park does that relate to that it's yet to be seen but yeah watch this space right rich mike rich shall we mike dive into some mm -hmm. questions i posed to some subscribers on uh, the youtube channel to mm -hmm. ask them some things and to get some thoughts as to how everyone what was the basically the vibe about universal studios great britain thus far so let us dive into what those questions were and if, if you do want to uh, contribute to these because there will be more going forward for future episodes then please obviously like and subscribe guys sorry i had to get in there at some point didn't i hit that bell hit that bell hit that bell not the one from beauty and the beast that is a different thing altogether but let's move on to the first question dark oh, oh. Good. 
So, if Universal chooses to go ahead with Universal Studios Great Britain, do you think that residents around Kempston Hardwick and the surrounding villages will be welcoming of the news? So, 41% said yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 4% said they'll all hate it. And 55% said there will be a few concerned locals. So that's kind of what we could expect. We know mm. what the British theme park situ is like. Let's just take Alton Towers, for example. The perfect example, yeah. Go has ahead. the worst... <laughs> the people basically hate that park. If, if you live anywhere near it, you hate it. It's yeah. like you can only move in if you hate Alton Towers and you don't mm. want them to succeed. Um no this right is... higher than the tree, nothing loud no. after three o'clock in the afternoon. Don't and... ruin my day. Yeah. I want, I want to stand here in my English garden, which I rebuilt Jerusalem on England's green and pleasant land for myself, and I want to enjoy it without the smiler off in the distance going... Does it still do that? It does. It's not the right ah, tune, but smile. yeah, we, we, we appreciate the sentiment that you delivered. What to is the right tune now. for the smiler, Mike? <laughs> I can't do it as, as high pitched and for as long as you. I've, my voice broke years ago, Rich. Oh, uh, well, you know, that's why you've got to keep a, a foot in both camps. Don't understand anyway, the but, reference. No. <laughs> I mean, I got to. Like, do you envision. The kind of possibility, like, could this be Universal's version of Disney's America? Are you seeing that kind of thing of where, awesome, this is going ahead, this is going ahead, suddenly then this grassroots anti-park campaign happens and suddenly it all just fizzles away to nothing. Do you see it going that far or do you think there's just going to be some fella called Colin with his very frumpy wife with a clipboard going don't like the idea of this at all if I'm if I'm bloody honest with you no 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 is that your English accent your middle like, England accent <laughs> yeah I think you're bloody fine look I'm I am a respected man in this community I am part of the golf club I played cricket once for the cricket team and I shall not see these bloody yanks and he'll always call them yanks You'll never say Universal. You'll never say American. You always got bloody Yanks coming over here. No, 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 no. You slipped into Welsh again, then I'm afraid. With which part? That was that was a good accent. Here, here, here. D here. No, here. do you know what they say? No, here, yeah, here, here, here. here. Do you know what they say down here? Yeah. I'm yeah. I got. Oh no, it's ears here. Yeah, it's all the same. But yeah. Anyway, I'm right. You are. Yes. Let's let's just say that for the sake of moving on the conversation. Yeah. Please, please. I wasn't going to bring any attention to it. But um, so, yeah. Do you, Colin, yes, the yeah, localer. Colin, yes. And his frumpy he, wife. Got to be frumpy. Uh, that's He's frumpy point, as well. But she's also frumpy. Yeah. Everyone they're in Kemp, No, let's not go there. So, well, if, effectively, as the aforementioned rumours go. Um, by those NDA signing locals, they've all sold up to Universal potentially anyway. So if that's the case, there's not going to be very many locals left to complain. There's, there are surrounding villages, like for example, there's a village called Wootton on the other side of the dual carriageway, not very far. Um, the southern parcel of land backs onto a, vi a village called Stewartby, um, and some people's back gardens and a farm are basically going to back onto the fence at the bottom side of that uh, southern parcel of land. And then there's to the northeast or so is Wixom's, um, another smaller but growing village. So they could have something to say. Um, but as for actual Kempston Hardwickians, that's what we're calling them now, um, there yeah, probably won't be very many of them left and actually that works as a, a rather nice segue onto the next question that I did pose to subscribers which was mm -hmm. if you owned a business or, or a house in Kempston Hardwick and Universal offered to buy your home would you accept it so I want to know what your answer to this question would be out of the three options that I gave which were 
definitely, no way, and for the right price. Oh, I'd have to have a look at the price first, definitely. Uh, like, I wouldn't be just taking book value for it, you know? I'd be a bit more tea vicar, whatever mm. they came back with, yeah. Well, I don't know if... I don't think I've said it on this episode or if we've had a conversation about it, but mm -hmm. do you know what the rumours are as to what some residents in Kempston Hardwick have been offered? Drugs? Yes, but that's just totally irrelevant and nothing to do yeah. with Universal. Yeah. No, they, they've been offered twice as much as the value of their home. Allegedly. Allegedly. NDAs. They're doubling. Doubling the money on a house. Double or nothing. So you can only imagine that's going to be a one-time offer. Like, the longer this goes on... Say you've got a couple of people... You've got some Mr. Fredericksons who are refusing mm -hmm. to sell up. Everyone else around them is is selling up, moving on, and then suddenly a great big ruddy theme park is being built back in onto their garden. They're not suddenly going to have that same offer on the table. They're not going to get that price from Universal at that point. Mm. So I think if you're going to sell up, you need to do it sooner rather than later because you're just not going to get the same amount of money and you're going to have to put those balloons on your house and fly away if you expect to escape once these, this thing starts going vertical. No, it'd be like those, uh, like you know, like people in Japan. Like there's that house in the middle of a motorway. Mm -hmm. Like literally, people have to drive around it. It'd be one of those situations, except it would be like Hagrid's magical motorcycle cruise going around it. Yeah. I can never say that one right. I don't know why I would say cruise either. But I suppose it's a he cruise. Is, he is kind of cruising. You know, he's just cruising on his bike. Oh, so not like a cruise, like a. You know, cruise a, liner. A, boom, a boomer cruise, yeah. He's no. just kicking it back, he's enjoying yeah. the all-you-can-eat buffet, a couple of cocktails. Yeah, listening to a little bit of um, Fleetwood Mac or something like that, chilling. Yeah. I can imagine Hagrid doing that and having a ball as well at the he same would. time. Yeah. So um, that's your answer then, for the right price. I th And I think double double will probably be the the right, uh, right for me, yeah. I would take double. Well... Your opinion is shared by 71% of the people who answered. 8% um, said no way, so it'd be interesting to know if that's actually the case in Kempston Hardwick. Is there going to be a couple of families that are just sticking down, sticking their heels in and saying, like, I'm not going anywhere? I mean, is that going to be enough to stop the project? Or as you say, are they just going to have to then live at a building site? Yeah, the, the way it is currently with the, that line of houses, um, it kind of means that the land is broken off a little bit in like a hourglass shape. So it's it's not the best scenario for Universal, but I think if they did, if no one chose to sell, or indeed if they haven't even offered to buy, then it's not going to be a make or break scenario for them. They're just going to have a line of houses kind of awkwardly in the middle of this site and yeah those people if they don't don't sell up are not going to be too happy i imagine at having hotels theme parks water parks fireworks yeah. drone shows whatever going off at all hours so yeah if it was me for the right price obviously i would want as much as i could but i think i think i would have to sell up do you know what they do that's where they put the Harry Potter bit, is by the houses, and then they build um, Harry's auntie and uncle's house, like, near it, so then they can use those houses as kind of, like, background for that one to make it seem more immersive and realistic. Yeah, why not? Could you imagine waiting so long for Universal to build a park you spend, I don't know, 150 quid to get in there. You walk in, the first thing you see is, wow, it looks just so, looked like Brookside Close around you. I could never get this experience anywhere else. Exactly. It just looks so realistic. Just, here's a row of terraced houses. It looks cool. exactly like, uh, yeah, just standard housing that you could see anywhere in Britain. It's amazing. Only there's a B&M dive coaster going through the middle of it. Lovely stuff. I'm using technical terms now, you don't know what that is. Well, no, I know b and I know they're a, a manufacturer, but the first yes. thing I thought was b and &M, &M as in the shops, and I was like, why would they have a b and shops in there? Unless they're so, so committed to being 
ultra realistic that yeah they would definitely just have a big box B&M store probably the range next to it as well then and uh, a Lidl's or an Aldi actually um, funnily enough on the other side of the road to the site there is a B&M distribution centre so you know it's, here we go it's already it's on all falling into show. place here we go <laughs> So let's move on to the next question that I asked. And it was, if you live in, lived in or around Kempston Hardwick, what might be your biggest concern about Universal Studios opening a theme park? Uh, and the options were traffic in or around the surrounding villages, which mm-hmm. 49%. So almost half the people actually said that. Uh, and then a quarter of people said noise. Uh, and then 10% um, said both uh, inadequate rail facilities and disruption to infrastructure during construction. And then a little old 5% just said traffic on the A421, the dual carriageway. So I don't think I'm surprised about the fact that half mm. of the respondents said that they'd be most concerned about traffic because, again, going back to Alton Towers, a lot of traffic, a lot of visitors have to pass through the village of Alton, which is a tiny, narrow, several hundred year old village. Uh, and to get coaches meeting head on in that village mm. is utter carnage so yeah. i don't think anyone in the, the back arse end of bedfordshire wants to experience that day to day and you were ex- you would expect because this would likely be a 365 park it would be all day every day mm. every day of the year at least Alton towers is only seven or eight months do you know something that um it wasn't one of the options there but um, something that might be effective is and it's a good and a bad thing is the development around the park site as well because we're talking about the theme park has there been any talk that they're going to include a city walk section I would be very surprised if there wasn't like we could probably mm. use let's not I know Epic Universe is the most recent park that they're currently building but we can mm. probably use Universal Studios Beijing is kind of a, what we could expect on mm-hmm. a scale and infrastructure and uh, and things like that. And yes, there was a city walk, it is a city walk in Beijing. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had a, not a huge city walk, not as big as Orlando, but certainly one that's going to have a, a good half a dozen restaurants and some shops. But then in the surrounding areas, so there's going to be a Universal Hotel, at least one right yeah you would yeah, definitely but you're also going to have your premier inns your holiday inns your ibises they want to going to yeah. be getting in there and if there's a restaurant chain that isn't on city walk then they're going to want to be as close as they could possibly be to those other places as well then it's suddenly that extra development in the surrounding area of non-universal stuff as well and that might be something that would impact locals as well and might be a concern for them is suddenly like oh i bought this house i had this nice nice quiet place in the country and it's like awesome now i'm surrounded by four gregs eight nandos and a popeye's chicken you know uh, you say that as if it's a bad thing rich actually have you tried popeye's chicken there's one in car there's two in cardiff actually and my word the batter on that anyway this podcast is not brought to you by Pop- popeye's chicken but Everyone enjoys One day, maybe, if it goes well. That's what it's all about, baby. We're we're open for anything. If you've got fried chicken, dick pills, dick chickens, fried pills, whatever, we'll hock it. Don't you worry about that. Um, I'm not going to hock anything like that, but... um, It's interesting you you say that. It's around an area. Yeah, it, it can't not benefit. It can't, because Bedford is... It's hardly a town full of opportunities in the American dream so to have something open literally down the road is gonna bring millions of people into the area not just people like staying over but like just day visitors and after the park every, you know people aren't gonna necessarily want to spend all of their money at Universal so they're gonna look for places to eat they're gonna look at for hotels to stay in um, they, they'll stay in a local B&B and they'll want food and shopping and it's gonna yeah it's gonna encourage a lot of new business that's just gonna be there to complement Universal Studios and 
as well as that jobs like there's going to need mm. to be people working in all these places not just universal studios which itself is going to employ thousands once it's open you would imagine but all of the surrounding related jobs yeah yeah so it's going to have a massive knock-on effect and that's i think a really important thing that local people need to 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 listen to is yes it's going to bring more traffic in yes it might for a while disrupt things whilst they construct it and they build new roads and infrastructure and trains and things like that but the payoff is that there's going to be jobs for your kids for your grandkids for their kids and grandkids like this thing is going to keep paying it forward for generations and that's not just me as a theme park enthusiast who wants to see this happen speaking it's just from someone who wants the area and people to do well and bring in all of that green stuff all of that Popeye's chicken green stuff that makes it seem like it's bad chicken there as in like it's like some kind of moldy yeah. chicken yeah but so almost like a little instead of international drive I guess it would be British drive or Empire <laughs> drive <laughs> colonial Possibly. drive yeah wow yeah Possibly, possibly. It's, yeah, it's an exciting future in store for, for Bedfordians. I keep mm. inventing the names for people, but yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of money to be made by a lot of different businesses, and there's going to be a lot of people wanting to spend money as well. So, because yeah. I think people. with, with um, Alton Towers as well, then when you were saying about the local area there, even though that's a big park because it's a seasonal park they don't really have that infrastructure around there like if you're staying yeah. at Dalton Towers you're pretty much staying at one of the two hotels and if you're there that's where you're going you're not going okay I'm at the hotel I think we'll go out to the hotel for an hour or two grab dinner have a couple of drinks yeah. and then come back it's like you can go out but there's nowhere to go it's literally you can yeah. walk around in the dark yeah exactly and it's, it's not even like there's decent takeaways on there. So mm. we, we were there at the start of the season this year and um, looked on Deliveroo and Uber Eats and the selection of local takeaways and delivery options was garbage. So <laughs> you're right. If, if you're staying on site, you're either taking a sandwich with you or you're paying Merlin prices mm. for food that is questionable at best. So at least yeah. you know with Universal as well that you're going to pay a lot for it, but generally it's going to be really good as well mm. it's making sure that they can keep that quality uh across the parks as well. i mean they've done it so far i mean you know there's that's not been lost in translation wherever they've gone so yeah. hopefully it's the same there yeah exactly give, give me that premium service for mm. a, a cost for yeah. a cost of course Definitely. so for the next question it's quite a simple one it's a yes or a no answer do you think Universal Studios will get the green light following uh, a positive feasibility study? So what do you think? Will it go ahead if they choose to go ahead? Yeah, I'm all in. Yeah, I think they definitely are. Yeah, I think so. Like, like we touched on earlier, they've spent a lot of money. Then mm. probably not going to get that money back if they choose not to go ahead with the project. Like, I can't imagine anyone's going to see the same sort of value in that land as they have so they're not going to spend 300 million buying it from universal so i do think it's likely to go ahead excellent there we are between the two of us there we are they've got the green light we have solved world hunger we did it well thanks to popeyes no we're not doing that okay yeah Cut. last question then <laughs> last question um let us know. Oh, no, that's what I ask people to say. Universal Great Britain. <laughs> Lots of themes are potentially on the horizon. What would you like to see? So shall I run through some of these answers? And, and you can let me know if you would like to see them well, come to the park. It was something you asked me at the start, and I feel like I've had I've had some time now to percolate on it, and I feel I have I have more. More. You, okay, so Rich, what would you like to see come? Oh, no, 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 no. I'd like to hear what other people have to say first. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Tenterhooks. Okay, so uh, Amanda Cowell has said Jurassic World, and I am fully on board with this one. I would love to see anything Jurassic. I want the dark ride from Universal Studios Beijing, which looks banging. Yeah. It looks good. Have you seen an on ride 
POV of that ride. I have not of this one, no. So if you have, if you're avoiding spoilers for it, I would just scrub forward maybe 20 seconds to, to those listening. Um, basically, it's the similar sort of ride system as um, the Scoop vehicles, so Spider-Man Transformers, um, but in the Jurassic World world. That's all I need. You got me. I don't need any more because I love the Spider-Man ride. I also love the Transformers one as well. Then, yeah. Oh, which, which is, is better? Your... Which is better? Uh, I'll always go Spider-Man. Nah, yes, yeah. Oh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, it for me, it's whatever I rode most recent. <laughs> like I it, know, I swap and change. It's it's a pain in the ass because I can't decide. As as much as I like taking photos for J. Jonah Jameson, I do have a soft spot of shoving things in uh, Optimus Prime's chest. And... Things. Uh, well, the all spark, but anything in general. The all spark, if I can get a, get my hands on it, but um, I'll shove anything in there. To be honest, I love it. Yeah, I mean that's that's sorted, and what you do in your own time is, uh, you know, it's your own business. We're not going to go into that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a it, that ride system, whatever it is, if it's Jurassic World or not, that needs to that ride system needs to come. A, to the UK. The same with the Kuka arm technology used in Forbidden Journey. Um, that we need something like that in in the UK, and mm. both of those would instantly become the top two dark rides in the UK because we just don't really do dark rides. So we we would yeah, we need that. You a think big with the weather headline. we have. Yeah, yeah. You think with the weather we have that there would be more indoor attractions, but it's like no. You can have a merry-go-round. That's it. Yeah, you can have a merry-go-round and a ride, uh, a roller coaster that can only open for six months of the year because for the rest of the time it's too wet or cold. All those caterpillar ones uh, where they're the cars and they go round in circles and up bumps like that. You know the baby ones where they're like red and yellow caterpillars. Uh, yeah. And they go. Yeah. Oh, a wacky worm. Is that what they're called? Or that yeah, one sure. yeah, dragon one. roller coaster that's uh, the one that you always see at uh, traveling fairs and everything like that. It's either always called like Loch Ness Monster or Dragon something, and it's always the same track layout every time. And it's always a just yeah, dragon. just an oval. Yeah, yeah. So and it, we're, we're, getting, we're, we're just losing sight of what we're talking about now. So yes, let's get uh, back more. To Amanda's more also idea. said Jaws and Back to the Future and Kong. So what about those? Like they they are, have basically found themselves out of the park now but we're, we're wanting to welcome them back in people are loving the nostalgia like we had the tribute store in orlando mm. city walk um over the last year or so so there is clearly still love for these older properties and yeah i can't imagine we'd have a ride taking up as much land as jaws um, but maybe we could have something back to the future well, I, I tell you how much love there is. Last time that you were at Universal, I um, FaceTimed you while you were in the Tribute Store and you picked me up four pairs of uh, Back to the Future socks. Yeah. So that's that's how much I'm feeling. Like, I heard an idea before and I, I, I believe I saw this on um, a video or something I'd seen and it was a suggestion. I can't remember whether it was something I saw on social media. I'll try and find it and then put a link uh, to where I'd seen this idea which was it was suggested great movie ride from uh, Disney Hollywood Studios Universal doing one of those with mm. those IPs so you're going round and think then it's suddenly here's the bit about the um, the Universal monster movies and then suddenly we're going into this Universal movie. Oh, now we're visiting Jaws. We're seeing this. Now we're visiting Ghostbusters scene. Now we're so yeah. you're just seeing these like just little scenes, little. I was going to say dioramas, but they're not dioramas. You know what I mean? Yeah, scenes and everything yeah. like that from each film. So they're not full rides on each one, but you get that that taste of it. You turn around the corner, it's suddenly like, oh, it's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. It's the roof of the building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I turn yeah. around. Oh, it's Jaws. Yeah, you get the idea. Oh, yeah, I, I could fully embrace that idea. It's it's a little bit like the tram tour at Universal Studios Hollywood, but on a, mm. I guess, a smaller scale and maybe all indoors. So, I yeah. I, yeah, I would not be opposed to that idea. Just maybe not every theme. Like, you wouldn't want to necessarily have 
Potter, Jurassic World, Nintendo in there. But yeah, maybe it, it could be like a retro movie ride, something like that. Like you say, the the uh, the Universal Monsters, Jaws, Back to the Future, King Kong could show up. Like there's a lot they could tick off mm. in just one ride there. Earthquake. They could always that that earthquake thing always goes down well. You know the uh, whether it's um, actually based on a movie, whether it's disaster, whatever. People like going on a bit of a tram, earthquake in San Francisco, and then going out. Bam! Just throw that in and there as well. The, actual, the thing about the UK is as well like we very rarely get earthquakes, so it would be a fun escapist experience. But having that in LA, which frequently experiences earthquakes just seems a bit weird yeah. well actually the ride was based in San Francisco but I don't want to correct you there Mike but you are wrong it's it's San Francisco I'm sorry I brought great shame on all of us and I'm sorry to all the listeners out there so let's quickly move on L Chapman yep. uh, or Chapman sorry has said uh, a 007 ride which yeah I mean if rumours are to be believed we could see something Bondish. yeah 100% now it depends which Bond well I suppose they wouldn't show any actual Bond from it it would just be some generic looking Bond like man because but yeah, 007, definitely. I'd have a bit of 007 all day. I mean, I don't know how a ride of it would work myself, unless you did a dueling coasters thing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like then. a car chase type thing. Yeah. But, I mean, the obvious one uh, would be, yeah, reskin of the Bourne, stunt spectacular. De- like, yeah. That, that stunt show, like. <sighs> You think like the time of stunt shows has come and gone and then suddenly uh, that comes out and you're like oh there is a way of doing a live action car chase on a static stage and it looking mm-hmm. good it's a yeah okay all right well yeah let's go let's go with that one and plus with it being on the stage there as well if they did want to do a little bit of that um terminator style thing of shooting it with an established actor, if they wanted to do it with whoever this new Bond's going to be, or Daniel Craig, or Pierce Brosnan, fingers crossed. Um, they could shoot all that somewhere and then have the uh, the live actors uh, doing stunts as well. So that, that if they were going to have 007, I would imagine it being done that way. Maybe a themed restaurant, or more specifically, maybe a little themed cocktail bar. Ooh, shaken but not stirred. Yeah, yes. having the Vespa, having the dry martini, a little bit of nice vodka there as well then. Yeah, it, do it as a, a high-end thing for adults because I'm an adult and I just want things for myself. Just give me give me all the booze. Yeah. That's all I need. I just want booze and rides and nice food. That's about pins. it. Pins. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> pins, of course. Of course. A seven so... pin would be nice. Oh, don't. So I, I would spend all of my money there. <laughs> so, another one here from Jason Madgwick. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the. A few people have said that actually. I, if if Universal have somehow acquired the theme park rights to the Lord of the Rings, there would be th- that would be the the uh, jewel in Universal Studios. Great Britain's crown, I think. Like that would be so unique, and you know that Universal would do it well. Oh, I just want it, Rich. Okay. I want it. All right, how would you do it then? You tell me. How are you doing it? If you were given the uh, the blank check, the blank piece of paper, Mike, make Lord of the Rings a theme park land. How are you doing it? Right. Here well, we if go. you watched my last video on AI, I, I would suggest going back and watching that if you haven't seen it. But there's a visual representation of what I'm about to say in there. But it's a land broken in two halves, a little bit like how Nintendo is with half Mario and half Donkey Kong. So you walk in, you're in, and you're in Hobbiton. You've got the mount, the uh, the, sort of the hills with the Hobbit houses sort of lining it. You can go up there. There's a couple of like nice shops and restaurants. You go in through the round doors. It's all lovely and quaint. There are bridges and streams and there are roaming actors and it's so quaint and everybody's so happy and they're spending all of their money. (laughs) And there's a flying theatre in there where you get on the back of one of Gandalf's uh, flying eagles and you take a nice 
scenic trip around Middle Earth and everything's wonderful. But then you go through to the second half of the ride and you get on a Kuka Arm uh, dark ride. The same technology as Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, but you get on and it takes you around some of the darker locales around Middle Earth. So you're going through the mines of Moria and you're going into Mordor and there's a little golem animatronic smacking a fish against a rock and he sees you and he's angry and then you scurry away and oh rich i want it <laughs> inject it into my veins yeah okay we'll make it happen then didn't alton towers try to make their own little hobbiton or at least they opened up some cabins that tried to kind of look like it y yeah a little bit they've got the enchanted village which is kind of a glorified center parks type thing it's a lovely area to be fair mm -hmm. it's very expensive uh, but, I mean, yeah, you've just put the idea into my head that you could do a Hobbiton Hotel. Oh, people staying in little that, chalets. They're actually staying in yeah. little Hobbiton halls. Come on. Oof, that, that's just a license to print, print money. money. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving on to the next one, we've got um, Adam has said, maybe Doctor Who. So, I brought this up in my last video as well. I could imagine a Doctor Who dark ride being incredibly immersive. Mm -hmm. The only, the only question mark about it is, is uh, do the theme park rights exist in the respect that Universal could acquire them? Because I believe when Paramount were going to build the London Resort or have a say in the London Resort, they were going to actually have a lot of BBC IPs. So have they now reverted to someone else with the whole Disney Plus uh, Doctor Who thing, do they have some sort of first refusal when it comes to maybe a Doctor Who ride? I don't know. Is it a big enough draw in America to, or, or internationally to warrant a, a you know an e-ticket scale ride? I don't know. Would would you be? You're not a big Doctor Who fan, are I'm you? What a, would you? Your doctor, opinion be? I'm not a Doctor Who guy. No. Um, like if you were going to do it, like my first thought would be. Uh, you could use the ride system from The Simpsons slash Back to the Future and just make it that thing of you're going into a TARDIS thing and then you're just watching a big film from there then and it's flying through here, there and everywhere. Yeah. And maybe like a Star Tours kind of thing, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or, yeah, then you're doing a ride, but it's a slightly smaller scale, yeah. slightly less budget. You're not spending hundreds of millions on it. Or you just have some guy with a long scarf and a hat on just going, oh, I'm Doctor Who. I don't know. I don't watch Doctor Who. They all kind of do that, right? Yeah, I mean, you've just proven that you don't watch it because he doesn't refer to himself as Doctor Who. He calls himself Doctor What. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rich and I can see each other on webcam now and the blank expression he gave me with that joke is shameful and I feel shameful for myself and I'm going to wrap this podcast up right now because of the shame that I'm feeling. All right, well, look, if we're talking themed worlds, we should have the best of British. Yes. Which is why I would like a Last of the Summer mm -hmm. Wine well, attraction. Oh, we're doing this, are we? So. Okay. Well, what's the, what's, what, what are we having? We're not having an e-ticket. Yeah. Dark cry. Yeah. We're not having oh, yeah. a kooka arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's going to give you the immersive experience of what it's like for you and your friends to roll down a big bathtub down a hill. No. And there'll be a Nora Batty animatronic. Um, there, okay. it's gonna be a scene. I tell you, people are gonna love that. And need more like classic British sitcom things. Give me, give me the Scouse Street from Bread that people can go and visit, and you can go in the house and everything. Okay. Uh, are you being served? You can actually. You're on the department store floor. You can, you know. Uh, Oh, it's all happening from there then. There's 30 theme songs playing. Universal need to get on this one because Epcot already missed the boat on this one because they've got the British Pavilion. And they should mm -hmm. have they should have the only fools and horses Robin Reliant parked up in the British Pavilion. Okay. Right. Okay. At the Rose and Crown, every hour on the hour, they should have Del Boy falling through the bar. 
that I could get behind. And maybe like Barbara Windsor, like animatronic behind the bar. Get out of my pub! Oh, Let's just I throw thought you were going to carry on, but I didn't even think about the idea of just just building like soap sets. You know, that's going to appeal to someone, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. But, oh, no, I think a bit of carry on would be nice as well. Then we could do a little bit of like recreate carry on camping or something like that. Then a little bit of, oh, Matron put them away. Uh, oh, yeah, that would go down. Huge. If you wanted something a little bit more in the 2000s, you could have a Roman David Brent, I guess, um, doing that. Doing the uh, dance. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah that, that's going to be money as well, Ben. Another one that's being talked about, and this is a little bit more serious with it, is Paddington coming to mm. the uh, I would like that a Mike, great deal. Mike, I'm not emotionally ready for Paddington the Ride because... I cried at the two films and I can't be on a on a dark ride that's going to make me cry because those films are beautiful because Mike Mike have you seen them Mike have you seen Paddington uh, yeah they are better have you seen than Paddington they have any right to They're be amazing yes. Mike Mike yes. Mike Rich. his aunt was at the door at the end <sighs> I nearly lost it I tell I like I I was like I couldn't talk about that straight away I couldn't turn to my wife and go Oh, did you enjoy that? Because I knew if I did, I would have gone. Did you enjoy that? And my, I would have been. I would have got. I would have broken. So they need to have that. Oh, actually, oh yeah, they do actually need to have that on the right. I need a. I need a dark ride that's going to make me cry at the end of it because it's so nice. That's a lot of story to tell in like less than three minutes to get you that emotionally invested. Well, they've already done it in two films, so you know they've already built up my investment. But yeah, I'd say they need to have. A ride that can make me cry. Really, I need, okay. I need that. Universal, if you're listening, I know you're listening, of course you are. Um, make it happen. Make a Welshman cry. Bring me the most emotionally exhausting, beautifully made, engaging, just happy, soulful ride ever. No pressure. No, let, let, I'm sure if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Universal's creative team because they have made some bangers over the last few make, years. Literally, so I, literally make me an, an emotional roller coaster, if you will. I, I, I see what you did there Bang. and I, I appreciate that's, it and I like it. And that's why I invited you on this podcast. That's your out. That's your stinger and out. Bang. Bang, and the dirt is gone. And the dirt being this podcast, because we're going to wrap things up. So thank you very much for listening. If you've listened this long, this has been, this has run longer than we anticipated. But, you know, always the way. Tangents. Yes, thank you very much, Rich, for joining me on the first episode of I cannot remember what I said it was called. It was a long time ago we started recording this. Yeah. It's like a year since we started recording this. Universal Studios Great Britain Updates Radio or USGBU Radio. It's a mouthful. I'm going to have to change that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it... Um, it be... You stu grew brew apra. That's better. That's a lot better. What did I say? I Do me a favour. Take that little clip... Put it in the editing thing. Just take the gaps out, because I'm not going to be able to say that quickly. So use use the wonders of editing to make that happen. I will indeed. So thank you very much to everyone for listening. It's been a long one. If you've made it this far, please don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And uh, we will be throwing in some more questions for future episodes in the old community tab here on YouTube. Uh, but And let us know your thoughts. Drop in a comment. Let us know what you think. If you've agreed with anything we've said, if you disagreed, or if you just think it would be funny to make Rich say here again. Here. <laughs> Classic Rich. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>